Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. Let's get on with it. Landowners of major mining, gas and petroleum resources in Papua New Guinea are now at the threshold of historic benefits. The decision by the government virtually resets the negotiating table where all Papa ground will no longer be spectators but parties and be part of the table. Better still, this decision will eventually take the Papa ground all the way to the board level. Industries covered are the Octeri Mine in the Western Province, the Bougainville Copper Limited on the Autonomous Region of Bougainville, and LNG producing provinces, Hela, Sadna Highlands, Gulf and Central. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill gave this game-changing news to Parliament yesterday. Landowners have been alluded to this when the government took office in 2012. It was captured in the Alatau Accord and Mr. O'Neill brought it out briefly after winning the vote of no confidence. The details, however, emerged yesterday. They came after question time, so our cameras were not allowed to capture it, but he began with lines that were a matter of fact, but facts disregarded in the resource industry since our gold, copper, oil, gas, timber, the list goes on, became actual resources once tapped. The Prime Minister said, land and its connection to our people is the heart and soul of the country and our communities. It gives us life and supports livelihoods. It gives us a place for communities to live and ownership provides security. Mr. O'Neill continued, but too often landowners have been let down and their rights denied, not just by foreign developers, but by national companies as well. That all is going to change now. The Prime Minister began with the state-owned Octedi mine. The NEC endorsed a government decision to transfer 33% to the people of Western. That's one-third of Octedi Mining Limited equity. It's direct equity that goes to the landowners, the villagers affected, and the provincial government. Unlike the past, where they received only 6.1% as observers and in royalties held by the state. Mr. O'Neill announced that the new equity of 33% will be held in trust by the Mineral Resource Development Corporation. The people can then decide what to do with it. On the value of the mine, the Prime Minister informed the House the engagement of a world-class management team has turned a $500 million mine, when it took over, to a $3 billion US dollars in asset value in about 12 months. All that, including assets and a stake they have in PNG Sustainable, the total value, 2.4 billion kina, making the people of Western the richest in Papua New Guinea. The Prime Minister also noted issues with PNG Sustainable and the lengthy tassel of a funds between Mr. O'Neill himself and the former Prime Minister and Chairman of PNG Sustainable, Sir Makere Murauta. He made mention of this advertisement in both the newspapers yesterday. This then does come as a surprise. Both were reported to be working together to resolving differences before the vote of no conference, that now appears unlikely. Sir Makere accused Mr. O'Neill of not telling the truth. The Prime Minister countered that the government has no intention of taking over this particular fund. It belongs to the people of Western and will remain like that. All the benefits work out to be five million kina going to Western it's a blessing for one of the least developed provinces in Papua New Guinea. It could also be a curse if they squander the money. Next, how the LNG provinces are going to benefit under the new government announcement. The LNG producing provinces are Hela, the nerve center, the Southern Highlands, Gulf and Central Province. Oil production goes back to the early 1980s. Between that time and today, there had been several agreements between landowners and various governments. 
the Prime Minister told Parliament yesterday his government intends to honour all the previous agreements and this announcement in Parliament, something landowners waited for a long time, that has led to anger and threats of disrupting the project in Hela. At the centre is equity of 2% free carry and the 2009 Kokopo Umbrella Benefit Sharing Agreement. The government at that time decided that the state will give 4.27% in cotton, now Kumul Petroleum, as direct equity. Mr O'Neill explained that under that arrangement, landowners and the provincial government were to pay the state close to 1.1 billion US dollars for their equity. They couldn't find the money and now with low world prices for oil, they are not likely to come up with that money quickly. So the time to pay has been deferred. And here is the government's position on what might have been misinformation and false perceptions pushed by interest groups. The Prime Minister informed the House, since the sale of gas, there is a total of 135 million kina in royalties held in the central bank. A further 130 million kina in development levies and 200 million kina in equities to the five provinces associated with LNG. To make sure that the monies are there putting landowners at ease, the Prime Minister instructed that bank statements be obtained by government of